Welcome back everyone to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan and today I'm gonna show you around the Cruisinator. Is this maybe the ultimate overland land cruiser? Let's have a look around and find out. So let's have a look around the outside of the Land Cruiser. I'll show you all the things that I really like about it. And then we'll talk about the elephant in the room, obviously the pop-up roof. So at its heart, this is a 2019 Land Cruiser troop carrier. This thing has the four and a half liter turbo diesel V8 engine. In the 70 series, in this version, it has a single turbo. In the 200 series Land Cruiser here in Australia, it's a twin turbo. Same engine, but with a turbo, uh, twin turbo. So this is a five speed. And from the factory, it comes like that. It comes with diff locks. And I didn't realize they've modernized the 70 series quite a bit. This is a 2019 and it does in fact have power windows. It has cruise control. It has stability control, ABS, all those things you would expect a vehicle from 2019 to have, but which are kind of revolutionary for the 70 series Land Cruiser. Uh, what it doesn't have though is tire pressure monitoring. Although the owners of this one have added it. It doesn't have a backup camera, so it doesn't have a lot of things that people would consider standard in North America, but given that this is for the Australian, the South African, and the African market in general, these things are kind of agricultural. It has evolved a lot from its tractor heritage, but still close to a tractor. So let's walk around. I'll go over some of the things that I found really interesting. The owners here, Beat and Mel, they're just a younger couple. They had this thing built just outside Brisbane uh, a company called Bonetti Campers. They make the roof and they do kind of the whole conversion package. And you'll see inside in a minute, this thing is really nice. And so they've used this now for about eight and a half months. They've driven 40,000 kilometers all the way around Australia. They've been basically everywhere that Katie and I are hoping to go in the next 12 months. So we of course became friends and we've been camping together for a while now. And so what I love is this vehicle has really been used. It has paint chips. Everything on the inside has been battle tested. None of this is theory. None of this looks good in a magazine, although it does. All of this is actually real put to use. And I love getting inspiration from vehicles like this because I can learn from this. I can see what's worked really well for them. I can see how they solved a common problem that we all have, and I can adapt it to my current vehicle or my future vehicles. So don't be surprised if you see some of the things I'm gonna to highlight today showing up on my vehicle or on my future vehicles. And so first of all, being a Troopy, it only has 16 inch wheels. So of course you wanna stick with that because 16 inch tires are the most common to get when you're in Australia or Africa or wherever. So no reason to go for big tires. Suspension, they've optioned here the Old Man Emu VP51. And so Old Man Emu, they've been designing and building suspension here in Australia for forever. I think the best of the best in terms of long-term touring, in terms of weight carrying. You've got an Australian spec vehicle. I wouldn't ever even dream of using a different company. And in the rear, of course, it's leaf sprung and they've upgraded the leafs to carry the weight. And while this thing hasn't been insanely upgraded, you can actually legally upgrade the gross vehicle weight here in Australia. And so this one has a payload of something over a metric ton, something around two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, don't we all dream we could have that in North America? So something interesting that I learned, the snorkel here, this is Toyota's factory snorkel. It actually ends right here on the inside. There's a gap of about this big. And then the airbox just has a big opening in the side. So in theory, the air is gonna go from the snorkel, cross that gap and into the airbox. But it does mean that it isn't a sealed unit. It does mean that water could easily get into the airbox. So while it looks like a river crossing snorkel, it is not a river crossing snorkel. Coming around the front bumper, obviously good kangaroo protection is a must. Obviously good lighting is a must. Something really interesting you'll note, this is a winch ready bumper. These guys don't have a winch. They've just driven all the way around Australia, Cape York, all of Western Australia. They crossed the Simpson Desert, all the highlights that anyone could dream of doing in Australia. They don't have a winch. They decided it wasn't worth the extra weight and they decided if they do anything stupid enough to need a winch, they need to go and go somewhere else. They've had an epic adventure and they never even needed a winch. 
Coming down the side of the vehicle here, we see the Rhino Rack Batwing Awning. This is exactly the same one I have on my Jeep. And of course, a shovel with easy access. So they have then the massive outdoor living space, just like I have on the side of the Gladiator. Here too, something that definitely is showing up on a future vehicle of mine. This is called the Quick Pitch uh, Table. And so these are kind of common in Australia now. This is a stainless steel table and it mounts the Max Tracks. And so they've got four in here right now, but it's all adjustable here on these bolts. And you can just have two if you want. But the idea is you've got your Max Tracks, they're padlocked in so no one can steal them. But when you want, you now have a table on the outside of the vehicle. And Beat and Mel said they actually use this a huge amount because they love being outside and it's at a really convenient height for cooking, for food prep, you're having a quick drink, whatever. I think it's a genius idea. Store your Max Tracks and get a table on the outside of the vehicle. Sounds pretty good to me. Coming around to the back here, obviously there's two tailgate tables on the barn door and these are just super simple affairs held up by straps. But again, really convenient when you're cooking, when you're eating. Of course, you always need more table space because you've always got more things that need support. Underneath the Troopy, it does have two factory 90 litre diesel tanks. Comes that way from the factory. Here at the back, they've added a 100 litre water tank. That's this big tank here hanging at the back. And there's some other associated plumbing and wiring for some of the other systems. So that gives you a good rundown of what's going on on the outside of this Troopy. But of course, the big thing that we need to talk about is the pop-up roof conversion. And so these kinds of conversions are fairly popular on the Troop Carrier because it is the number one vehicle to drive around the world. More of these are driving around Africa and the world than pretty much every 4x4 put together. And certainly here in Australia, they are easily the most common four-wheel drive. And so this is made by Bonetti Campers. They're on the Sunshine Coast, just near Brisbane in Queensland. And the idea here is that the factory roof has been cut out and then this fiberglass roof has been molded on. And you can see it has this big forward section that actually sticks way out past the windscreen. And the reason for that is because you get a queen size bed, but you can still stand up and walk around in the back. And I'll show you that in a minute. And the other big advantage of it is it all goes up like that. It isn't just a wedge camper. So that means you get so much more living space in there for two people to stand up and walk around. That is, I think, the huge advantage of this, this particular conversion compared to others that I've seen on Troopies or even compared to the pop-up roof that I had on my Wrangler for Africa. So let's climb inside and I'll show you what's what in there. As I climb inside here, I just need to turn around and close the bug net, which is magneted together. And it's important to note too, the owners made this themselves with $20 worth of bug netting. So again, what I love about this vehicle is that it's all actually real. The owners did some of the small modifications themselves and they've really tried it out. So the first thing you're gonna see is I'm six foot two and this is cavernous. There is an enormous amount of space inside this Troopy. I can literally reach my arms up almost as big and tall as they go and I still am not touching anything. So here I am inside the footprint of a regular four wheel drive and I almost can't touch any surface. Amount of space this provides interior living space, absolutely essential. And you can see this is really, really slick, this whole conversion. All this molded fiberglass, the really well thought out LED light stripping, the way that the fiberglass here is joined into the original body of the vehicle, all of this is very, very well designed and very slick. And it shouldn't be any surprise, the company who made this, Bonetti Campers, the guy is actually Swiss. And if there's one thing I've learned about Swiss overlanders and Swiss people who build vehicles, they don't settle for second best. They're not interested in taking shortcuts. Let's do it the right way. Let's do it the best way. And you wind up with a vehicle like this, which is absolutely primo. Um, so where do I even begin the tour in here? I'll just start at one end and move to the other. The first thing down under these cushions is actually a built-in fridge freezer. On the left here, this is the fridge. And then on the right here, an entirely separate freezer. And what's really awesome about this particular setup is this is designed specifically for the troop carrier 
So the compressor and all the mechanism for this fridge, it's actually inside the wall of the troop carrier. So in there is the compressor, which means the fridge itself, maximum volume to actually store stuff instead of having, you know, that corner of the fridge that's unusable. So talk about custom design solutions that are better than anything you can buy off the shelf. Um, coming along down here underneath, they actually have a diesel air heater. Um, and so it sucks in air, I think over here, and it blows out air over here. And you get this control panel where you can set the temperature and you can set it to come on at a specified time and all of that. And something I've learned from Beat the owner is this unit cost $150. So traditionally, if you're not aware, diesel heaters cost $2,000 from some of the big manufacturers. They're very highly computer controlled. They're very complicated things. Apparently you need a diagnostic computer to fix them. In the last couple of years, there've been a lot of Russian companies and a lot of Chinese companies making them. They're super simple, they're super reliable. And for $150, you get an excellent diesel heater. You can guarantee there's gonna be one of those in a future vehicle of mine when I go somewhere in the world that's much colder. Um, spinning around, obviously we have a huge big bench top and we have a whole enormous amount of storage. So a lot of this is kitchen stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of their personal effects because again, this is actually their house. Uh, Beat was just showing me some of these lights are just touch activated, which is really slick. Um, obviously there's a sink. They have hot and cold running water. I forgot even to mention when we were outside, there is in fact a shower outside with a shower curtain and you can change the temperature. And so the way that their hot water system works is it's actually electric. So when the vehicle is running, it can draw extra current from the alternator and it heats a 10 litre reservoir of water. Uh, and that reservoir is actually down the bottom here. Uh, I don't actually know how to open it, but that 10 litre reservoir will be hot once you're driving for half an hour or an hour. And then because it's so well insulated, it'll stay hot for a couple of days. And whenever you turn on a tap or the shower, you can just mix how much hot and how much cold so that that 10 litres of very hot water will actually last a really long time. Pretty slick setup. I wanna do some more research and figure out how much electricity it's actually using. Um, speaking of electricity, there is a lot going on in this vehicle that is just really well designed, really well thought out. Obviously a very slick DC to DC charger. There's about 300 watts of high efficiency slimline solar panels on the roof. We've obviously got a huge amount of control here for all the different systems. There's USB outlets, there's extra lighting, there's the temperature of the water, or that's the fridge in fact. One of these, this is the water system, more USBs, more lights. These are just power outlets for Australia. So there's an inverter in here somewhere so you can just plug in regular things. Um, and the whole system is powered by 150 watts of lithium ion batteries, which I believe are down here in this storage cabinet because that keeps the weight down low and centered in the vehicle. So plenty of power, 100 liters of drinking water, plenty of diesel, a shower, a sink, a fridge, this enormous bed space. And I'll just talk about that again while I'm thinking about it. The bed there, that's about half of its length. And to use it, you basically just grab here and pull and the whole thing slides towards me. And what actually happens is it stops right here where this groove is in the fiberglass. From here to over there, that is actually a queen size bed. It's queen size in width and it's queen size in length. And you can see, even when I've got my arm there, I am still standing here. I have plenty enough room to stand up and walk around. So what that means is for a two or even three person setup, someone or two people can be upstairs reading a book or working on a laptop or whatever. Someone else can be down here and have all of this space to walk around. Again, on those days that it's pouring rain or the mosquitoes are really bad, or you just wanna get out of the world for a minute, to be able to come in here and actually relax, get away from the bugs, this is how you get your sanity on a multi-year trip. This is how you keep your sanity when you're crossing the Congo or you're in Sudan, when you really want some private time. A vehicle like this, it changes a lot. It's really, really game-changing. And of course, looking around, there are a ton of little features going on here. You know, there are curtains here, there's plenty of storage. There's even storage actually under the bed between kind of the fiberglass roof and the original roof of the Troopy. There are obviously plenty of windows to let the light in. Beat was telling me you can get a insulated version of this canvas if you were gonna take it to cold climates. 
There are a lot of different ways to customize this. And of course, down the bottom here, there is a fold away table. So the table right now is stored just there and the table clips in here and then comes across. So basically you get a table between where I'm sitting now and where a person would be sitting facing me if they were there. So in terms of having interior living space, I'm not sure that I've ever seen a better Land Cruiser troop carrier. And I saw a lot of them getting around Africa and I've seen a lot of them here in Australia already. This might be the ultimate. Uh, is it for me? Am I gonna do it? I can't really import one of these into Canada where I live. Uh, for now, I've got the Gladiator here in Australia, which I'm loving, but a couple of things here, the diesel heater really interests me, the hot shower really interests me, and of course, interior living space. Actually, in fact, they have the outside living space and they have the inside living space. Really, really hard to beat when you're on a multi-year trip. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Cruisinator, the ultimate Land Cruiser troop carrier. If you wanna check out photos from Beat and Mel's trip around Australia, their Instagram is offbeattroopy. So I'll throw a link down in the description. They've just been everywhere that I'm about to go. So I've been picking their brain, really excited to hear all of their stories and get out there on more adventures. And in the future too, I'll bring you guys more videos like this where I show you real world practical overland vehicles and the things that I love about them most. So I hope it's been interesting. I hope you've learned a thing or two. If you've got questions, leave them down below in a comment. I'll try my best to answer them or I'll ask the owner directly. Let me know if you'd like more videos like this where I tour you around overland vehicles. Until next time, have fun out there and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.